SharePoint.com. In this video series, I'm going to be going through the complete installation of Windows SharePoint Services 3.0, which is available from www.microsoft.com slash SharePoint. Now, before you can actually install SharePoint, you need to do some pre-configuration on the server. The first step is to make sure that you have the, all the available Windows updates. Because SharePoint is going to leverage a lot of components in the operating system, you want to make sure that those are patched and at the current levels. Okay, well assuming you've done that, the next step is that we need to take a look at the server we're about to use, uh, just document a few pieces of information, and install some components for uh, Internet Information Server. So, to begin, I'm going to click on the Start button, I'm going to right click on my computer, and select properties. We see here that I'm using Windows Server 2003 R2. You can also just use Windows Server 2003 with Service Pack 1. I'm running the Standard Edition and you can utilize either the Standard Edition, Enterprise Edition, or Data Center Edition. Now, you can use the Web Edition but only as a front-end server. And so you'll want to watch our specific video series here at Learn uh, SharePoint.com so that you understand what the difference between a front end and a full uh, SharePoint server is. Now we see here that I'm running on a 3.4 gigahertz system with one gigabyte of RAM and that's good. And let's take a look at the computer name. The name of this server I called it My Portal and it's part of a work group so this is a standalone server. All user accounts and all that other stuff are going to be just completely isolated on this machine. Some of the other videos up here on the site uh, discuss utilizing SharePoint in a domain. But for this purpose, we're going to be using a standalone SharePoint server that we can just put on a server and get up and running, you know, maybe for testing or maybe for placing on our extranet where it can be isolated. Okay, so with that, it's now time to take a look at IIS. So we need to click on the Start, need to click on Control Panel, and need to use Add Remove Programs. Now, we see here the only software I've got loaded on this machine is Internet Explorer 7. And if I hit Show Updates, we see that I also have all of the updates and uh, hot fixes and all that sort of stuff for Windows that are available from Microsoft's website. So, we'll go ahead and turn that off. What we do need, though, is we need to have Internet Information Server installed, which is a component of Windows. So we have to click over here on the left, Add Remove Windows Components. Now, when this comes up, the IIS components that we need are located under the Application Server options. So select Application Server, but don't check the box next to it. Just select it and click Details. Select Internet Information Services and click Details. And scroll down to the World Wide Web Service and click Details. Now, under the World Wide service options, World Wide Web service options, you want to check the box to the left of World Wide Web service. And you'll see it will leave all the other options clear. We don't need any of these other options to run SharePoint. You might need them for other components that you might be running on your website, but in this case for SharePoint we're just going to use the World Wide Web service. We'll click OK. Now you will see it installed Internet Information Services Manager and that's the tool for managing IIS, that's good. And up near the top of the list, it is installed Common Files. Now the only component we might also want to install is the SMTP service. So go ahead and check that. This way your SharePoint uh, services can utilize email, so they can send and receive email messages directly on this server. Now with that, click OK, and then you'll see it has also enabled Network Com Plus access and that's okay as well. So go ahead and click OK and then Next. At this point it's going to go ahead and copy the files from your installation media and prepare them on this server. If you don't have your Windows Server 2003 CD in your system it's going to prompt you just like it's doing for me now. So let me dig out my CD and we'll uh, proceed from there. So just a second let me grab my CD. Okay, just drop the CD in. So let's click OK. Oh, shoot. Ah, I gotta stick the CD in. Again. 
So the CD is in there. Oh, the auto runs run, so we'll click exit. And we see behind the scenes it's picked up that the CD is there and it's busy copying over all the files that it needs and configuring the services. Okay, so IIS has now been installed, so we'll click finish. And we can close this window. And that's the first part of installing SharePoint. You need to get the server, make sure the server is configured and updated, and make sure that you have IIS installed. The next step will be to install the .NET Framework 3.0. And that's in the next video.